My name is Nanette Carter, and I've been coming out to Sag Harbor since I was eight years old. And so I have fond memories of coming out and visiting the Parish Museum, even as a young child. Yeah, just fond memories of coming to see art. This was an art mecca in many ways. I chose, I think it's around 25 pieces or so. And when I was there in the room, as people were bringing the works out, I felt like, I felt like it was Christmas or something, like people were handing me gifts. Of course, I couldn't take these home, but it was this sort of procedure of one, of a, one at a time bringing them out so that I could see them, see them in person, see the scale of the work again. Online, you don't get a sense of scale. Color could be off just a bit. So that was so helpful, but it was so exciting and so much fun. And now to see them up on the wall, professionally hung, looking great, you know, the lighting, um, they're all talking to each other. And I have to say, when I was in my home, you know, looking at these images on the computer, what drew me to these particular pieces was this sense of looking at different worlds, worlds that we don't see on an everyday basis. These are coming straight out of an artist's mind's eye, their creative instincts, you know, and I think with these works, as I see them all together, uh, there's also an energy that's there, that's just, it's vibrant, it's, it's compelling. Uh, some of them have a real sense of movement. I mean, these are stagnant pieces, but they're moving. Uh, the eye traverses the surfaces, they're rich surfaces, tactile surfaces, um, playful. I'm looking at the Elizabeth Murray right now, which I understand is a new acquisition. So I don't believe it's been seen at the museum yet. I'm really excited about that. And so, the other thing that I was really fascinated with was that a lot of the pieces I've chosen haven't been seen since the 90s. So, you know, to bring them out from the back and let folks see what's here, what the collection is like, 125 years of collecting. I'm looking at Mary Heilman's piece right now, and as much as it might appear to be a bit on that minimalist strain or genre. When you come in close and see all that's happening, and I think she's really reflecting on the beach, and one sees the beach, the sky, the night sky, all of it all on one picture plane. Daylight, nighttime, a roaring, you know, ocean, uh, clouds, and all of that on one format. And so, you know, even then, it, it's, it's, there's movement. There is that sense of movement, which I really enjoy. Um, and my piece, which is behind me, which is a collage, and I've situated uh, two of my mentors, really, people I've been very greatly influenced by. Um, one is Romare Bearden. He was the first black collagist that I had ever seen. And I just enjoyed this idea of that edge. There's something about the edge in a collage where you see the physicality of one surface against the other. And you actually see that slight relief aspect as it lifts up, you know, just the thickness of the paper or whatever. I love the physicality of the collage. And I think I was drawn to Romeo Bearden in particular because he certainly was sort of vamping off of Picasso, but he took it to another level. I think that he included such a painterly aspect. He also brought a lot of uh, images from Ebony Magazine, from different magazines and all. And the way that he cut up the face and then reorganized it, and it really reminded you of African sculpture, um, but again, I like the physicality of the collage, and that's what I'm certainly doing with my pieces. And because I'm working with mylar, and the gauge of the mylar, the thickness of the mylar, you really do see 
that physical aspect I'm talking about, how the artist is layering and positioning. Um, deco edges I love, you know, uh, when people are working with paper. So the edge for me uh, just signifies this other placement. It's not the paint that's being built up, it's this other surface that's being layered and built up that uh, I find to be very exciting. The other artist that's hanging next to me is Frank Wimberley, who lived right down the street from me in Sag Harbor. And he's probably the first black abstract artist that I've ever seen or met. And so to see his collages, I recall him showing his collages where again, tearing the paper, that deckle edge, um, and he was using uh, the paper that I think Bearden used quite often, and it was a paper that was silk screened. So when you t tore the paper, you actually had the white edge. So I know that he was a great influence on me getting involved with collage. Another reason why I'm really excited about this show, because I have so many female artists. Um, and some whose names you may not know, and I like that also. Um, I don't know how many people know uh, Judy Hudson. The work is stunning, and in fact, I think it's probably one of the most surreal pieces I have in this group. That floating world, I think, also I'm seeing quite a bit of. I think with my work, certainly it's floating on that wall. It's not framed. There's nothing that's um, containing it. It literally does float on the wall. It's, and uh, I'm looking at uh, Theo Hios's work, which I believe is also floating. So this floating world, which I think is this, almost this Asian aspect to uh, the way the history of, of art is presented. I don't think in European art we had that sense of the floating world as much as we see in Asian art. I have to say I at one point wanted to be uh, an architect and this idea of building, I think because as an architect you're actually not building the building, it was best that I became an artist because I could build the building, I could build what I wanted to build. And I feel as a collagist, that's what I'm doing, especially when I'm working on a large scale, getting up on a ladder, putting pieces together. Um, I'm a builder. You know, I think I'm a builder more than a collagist just because of the scale that I work. Artists back in the day, we're asked to speak as much as they're asked to speak today. We are asked to speak all of the time, which is amazing and it's great. Because you have videos now, you know, social media. I never knew what de Kooning looked like. You know, I didn't know what most of these folks looked like back then. You just knew names. Now we know faces. I mean, it's incredible the changes that have taken place in my lifetime. We know their voices. You know, we, we, we hear their voices and how they speak and gesticulate and what have you. We didn't have any of that back in the day. It's incredible. So I feel like I know some of these artists because of that. And younger artists get a chance to, to hear and see. Yeah, get a better sense of, of who they may be looking at seriously, you know? Very different time, very interesting time. Mm -hmm.